Hey, this is Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. So this video is about CIMT, which is the health of your carotid arteries right here in your neck. So carotid intima medial thickness. Intima is the innermost part of the artery, and then media is the middle part of the artery. So this is an ultrasound test. You can see this guy's getting an ultrasound of his arteries. And I'm going to compare ketosis and veganism to heal these arteries. So now look at figure 1B on the right. You can see two arrows pointing at each other, and they're pointing into a space that's sort of dark. That's the intima. That's the part that's closest to the blood of the artery. And then below that, or actually would be behind that, that's the media. That's muscular. So we're measuring the innermost part of the muscle to the innermost part of the intima. And, that's the th and you don't want that thick. That means inflammation and disease. And if you look at figure 1A, it's uh, so tight that um, you can't even see the lower arrow it meshes with that white space. So that's a healthy intimamedial thickness. Now, I've talked about the carotid artery or coronary artery calcium score for the heart. You can have zero score here and then 50% blockage in the arteries in the neck. You can have zero score here, like no blockage, but yet this could be very high. I've seen it both ways, and hopefully you have good scores both in both places. So get the CIMT done. It's pretty inexpensive, and actually doctors would be more willing to have you do this even over the coronary artery calcium score right now. And there's a screening test. There's a company, I think, called Lifeline Screening. You can look them up. And they go around to churches and libraries and they'll do health screenings. So if they ever come around to your area, get that done, they'll measure that. Okay, so this is a result of a vegan test, um, low-fat, whole food, plant-based diet by Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. And you can see on the left, there's a diseased artery. It's all clamped together. That means that there's less blood flow. And then the healthy artery, it's more open. These images are all over the internet. These this actual image, this artery, is all over the internet. I've been um, tricked by thinking that there's a lot, a lot of people with the same results, whereas it's actually just the same arteries. Okay, and but anyways, yeah, there's um, a veganism is a cleansing diet. It'll clean out your arteries, and I'm not going to debate anybody on that. I think that that's a true statement. It's a cleansing diet that can be healthy for the arteries. Okay, so let's get into ketosis. And I'm doing this, number one, because a vegan asked me to do it. And number two, I met Dave uh, Feldman uh, a couple months ago, and this is his work on himself, self-experimentation, self N equals one. He's treating himself and measuring himself. So July of 2016 to November of 2017, so almost a year and a half, he did the ketogenic diet, and his scores for his arteries went... Uh, the one got 20 points better, and the other one was like 150 points better. Now, notice that his LDL was high the whole time, too high according to conventional medicine. So you can have high LDL according to conventional medicine, and yet your arteries are getting healthier. That's the magic of ketosis. It just burns fat. It mobilizes fat out of your cells, and it gets into your blood and uses it as fuel. So just because you have a high LDL doesn't mean you're going to be sick. It could mean that you're actually doing a good job of burning it as fuel like we're all supposed to most of the time. Um, now, in May of 2018, he did another CIMT, and it says following four weeks standard American diet experiment. And both of his arteries got worse than ever before. So his left went from 537 to 610, and his right went from 536 to 694. So it just goes to show you how inflammatory and how bad sugar and bread is and the tortillas and the rice and the everything, all the different forms and shapes of bread, and they call it fancy names like croissant or baguette. It's all the same garbage, right? Not, I don't even recommend Ezekiel bread. I, you know, I've said this my whole career, avoid bread. And people complain about that, but I'm saying avoid bread, sorry. Okay. So let's, talk, let's look at a bigger study. This is a guy named Dr. Shai and others. He did a two-year comparative dietary intervention study. Three groups. One is low-fat, 
The second group is Mediterranean, which is not low fat. The Mediterranean diet is not a low fat diet. And then group three is a ketogenic diet. Now, this um, graphic has circles at the top, which are arteries that you see through this way. And then below that, we see the arteries that is sideways. And then we have the follow-up below that. So three circles in the middle. And then below that, we see the arteries sideways. So now group one is on the left. Keto is on the right. Mediterranean is in the middle. So the one on the left, the low fat, shows that there is less. It Actually, it got worse. So the arteries got tighter. The Medi uh, Mediterranean diet, it actually grew bigger inside. Like there was less thickness. So therefore, the flow area for blood got bigger. So increase in circulation. And then the ketogenic diet, same thing. The flow area got better. So um, I'll put the links below for everything that I'm talking about. And here's another study. Um, they looked at ketosis and the CMT and there was no change. But they did a lot of blood work and you could see the regular positive changes in the blood work that we're used to. And BMI, weight loss, etc., etc. So it comes down to this. Um, veganism is better than standard American diet, but ketosis is better than veganism. And when you eat the standard American diet, it's so inflammatory, it can cause a heart attack within a week. And I've seen this happen now a couple times. I had one guy, this is probably 10 years ago, he lost over 50 pounds doing low carb. And this is before I had people go into ketosis. I just had him do low carb, no bread, no sugar, etc. And he was very happy with the results. And, but he, and he was in his 70s and he decided he was going to start eating bread. And I, he asked me for permission and I said, well, I mean, it's a free country. You can do whatever you want, but I don't recommend that you eat bread. You should avoid bread. So he didn't pay attention to my advice. And on Friday, he had a couple sandwiches. And on Saturday, he had more sandwiches. And then on Monday, he woke up in the morning and came downstairs and his wife was in the kitchen. And he said, I don't feel good. Maybe if I sit down on the couch, I'll feel better. And he sat, he sat down on the couch and had a stroke and he died. And so if you have a propensity to stroke or heart attack from your genetics, from, you know, your parents had a heart attack, you have a high coronary artery calcium score or high CIMT, there is no cheating. There's not a day or, you know, three days of chocolate cake because somebody had a birthday or because it's Thanksgiving or, a, you know, a holiday. There's no, there's no cheating. So, um, and one last thing I want to say is that um, I was watching um, the uh, debate between Dr. Joel Kahn, vegan, and Chris Kresser, low-carb guy, on the Joe Rogan podcast. And it's long, you know, it's, what, three hours and 40 minutes. I'm halfway through it. But Dr. Kahn was talking about how the first mention of myocardial infarction in... The literature, medical literature, is 1916. Well, I have a study from 1912, I think, where they described the symptoms of heart disease and heart attacks. It's somewhere around 1912. But the point is, that's when this became a problem. So what happened before that that caused this problem? Was it the invention of meat? No. Was it the invention of animal products? No. It was the invention of sugar. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's that simple. You're always burning sugar. And then when you start eating candy and, and junk food, you know, soda pop, you're burning sugar in excess. That's the disease process. So I wrote down a few uh, moments of, this, of uh, the invention of these, of candy and pop. We got to Tootsie Rolls in 1896. Cotton candy was 1897. The first chocolate bar was 1847. Candy corn was in the 1880s, Wrigley Gum, 1893, Root Beer, 1876, Dr. Pepper, 1885, Coca-Cola, 1886, Pepsi, 1898. White bread really came into um, the market in the 1920s. And then uh, Crisco oil was the 1850s. Canola oil was the 1980s. <laughs> it's a whole new, brand new junk food. And then the early margarines was uh, early 1900s. So yeah, bad fats and excess carbs, that's the cause of heart disease. It always has been. And I'm going to say one more statement of fact. Of the top 11 foods that Americans eat, 
as far as like where do we get most of our quantity, uh, calories from, from, only two are meat, chicken and beef. So the other nine are carbs. So, um, so low carb is best. And of course you want to eat vegetables if your body doesn't have any negative reactions to them. But the basis of your diet is, is a, like a mild ketosis if your body is ready for it now. And um, that includes healthy uh, fats, whether it's from animals or the fruit oils like olive oil, coconut oil, or avocado oil. And I truly believe that that's how our, all of our ancestors lived in a mild state of ketosis most of the time. So if you like this information, please give me a thumbs up and share and subscribe. And uh, get your CIMT test run as well as your coronary artery calcium test. So you can get a, so you can get a baseline now and then you can compare it later.